a shout out for our rapamycin study that is starting our low dose rapamycin study. I'm just so excited to not just understand how it does on a population of people with long COVID, but really dig into the responder analysis, who responded and why. Um, this is what we're doing with our lumbrokinase study as well. We've received some critique online about lumbrokinase in a clinical trial because they're like, oh, well, the, the population already knows that that doesn't really work. And that's not true. The, the population, you know, as Stuart said, the population knows that like some people get a big boost from it. Some people get a smaller boost from it. But but people do get a boost from it. And what we're seeing in this study, because it's open label, is we're seeing people's fibrin levels dropping as they're taking the lumbrokinase. We can study that really closely and we can see that it's working. And then what we can actually do is understand like what is the ba what is the baseline level of fibrin levels where lumbrokinase actually starts to produce symptom improvement as your fibrin drops down. And that study has never been done before. That And that is the most important thing when we're trying to develop guidelines for who gets what, understanding what existing test we can use to good effect to then produce movement on symptom scores. So that's the sort of uh, clinical trial design I would like to see overtake everybody with long COVID gets one drug. And, you know, and then, and then because it's such a, multi pathology disease no one gets better or the statistics say that no one gets better and we're back to square one